Hi, my name is Brandon, and I'm an alcoholic and addict in recovery. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I had really three drugs that were my primary addictions in my addictive days. Marijuana, alcohol, and cigarettes. And I stopped cigarettes first, and then I stopped drinking, but I was convinced that marijuana was going to be okay, that that wasn't really a problematic drug, and that I could keep smoking the rest of my life without any negative consequences. Uh, it, this stemmed from my overall belief that all of the bad things I'd heard about marijuana were overblown by the media and by a history of negative press that wasn't really warranted. And that basically, if everybody really understood the truth about marijuana, it would be legal and nobody would have a problem with it. And a lot of that sentiment has has been carried by a lot of different people and that's part of the reason why we're seeing such a large legalization effort of the drug throughout states with I think last count 35 states have legalized some form of medical marijuana and 15 of those states have legalized recreational use. So it's something that we need to pay attention to, though, because for people like me and for people like Tommy Rosen in Recovery 2.0, marijuana was not just a fun drug to have. It was a drug that we got addicted to. The addiction is a little bit different than what we see in alcohol and uh, nicotine and other drugs that also come with a physical component to that addiction. But as we'll talk about, it's still an important addiction that has to be addressed in any recovery program. So I want to read some of what he says about it, uh, particularly about why he found it so attractive, because I have talked to plenty of people who do not find the high from marijuana that enjoyable. But for me, it represented something very, very special. And I really like the way he puts it in his book. One of the first things he says when he describes first getting high, he says, marijuana really changed things. I had needed to change. And here it was. It immediately dawned on me that I could do this anytime I wanted to. I had the power to transport myself to another viewpoint and change the way the world appeared. That right there is exactly what appealed to me so much about marijuana when I first started using it, is that it changed the way the world appeared. And I could, I could smoke, I could get high, and the world appeared completely different. Music sounded different. I heard different things in music. I thought in different ways. When my friends and I talked about things like philosophy and, and just random stuff that people who get high talk about, it felt like different types of conversations that we would have otherwise when we were sober. And the colors seemed brighter. Um, everything seemed, the blue sky seemed bluer. Um, the rainy day seemed mellower. Everything just seemed to have another more magical aspect to it. And I loved that about marijuana. It really, really, uh, it really, really made me love that drug. And that's what he talks about. Now, I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs where he talks about how he fell in love with the substance. Here I had found something that would make me feel easy for short periods of time. What I didn't know then was that there were long-term consequences attached to those periods of ease. As time went by, the ease came at a greater and greater cost. But in the beginning, that feeling was so compelling and the antics so fun that it worked beautifully, even magically. There was a big part of the reason why this was a big part of the reason why I had a su such a difficult time letting it go. I had been lectured many times about how dangerous marijuana was. I heard it was a gateway drug that would lead to other drugs. 
I heard it could make you go crazy and drive you to do things that you wouldn't normally do. However, compared to my personal experience, the warnings of society, parents, and teachers about the dangers of marijuana meant nothing. I was actually smoking pot. I had direct experience, and you know what my experience said to me? Tommy, you've hit the jackpot here. And that's what I felt like. I had been told all my life that this drug made people do crazy, crazy things. That people who smoked this drug got into trouble. They were uh, miscreants and they were the kind of the people who didn't care about doing well in life. And they were the people who were the outcasts. And then I got to college and I went to a college where a lot of the people were interested. And I would argue a majority of the people were interested in academic success so that they could go on to is to what they viewed as successful careers. And, um, and I saw these people who I felt a lot of these people were much smarter academically than I was. I saw these people going home and studying at night and then after night to relax some smoking pot. And I thought, well, wait, I didn't know people like this smoked pot. I didn't know people like this engaged in this drug. And what's more, I didn't know people like this used this drug and then still cared about doing things like going to class and making good grades and and those kinds of things. And all of a sudden, all these fe- all this fear that had built up inside of me that people had kind of instilled in me by telling me that marijuana made things, made people do crazy stuff. And all that fear started to go away. And, and that's why I, I feel very strongly that we, we've got to be really honest in our description to children about what drugs do and what the true dangers of addiction are Um, because the truth is there are a lot of people who can use marijuana without any negative consequences just like there are a lot of people who can use alcohol without any negative consequences Um, I'm not one of those people uh, but there are people like that And so I feel, but that's not the story that was told to me my entire life growing up. And um, by, especially by, you know, the teachers and people who are running our drug education programs in school, that's not the story they were telling me. They were telling me that this drug made people go crazy and do things that they would never do. And, you know, when when I was uh, getting high, I really, the, the things that I did were really pretty tame. I, I didn't, you know, I didn't do anything wild or crazy that, that I can remember. I, in fact, those things, those things that I did that I wish I hadn't done, uh, happened while I was drinking. And so I saw this contrast between alcohol and marijuana and uh, when I was using marijuana I felt more in control of what was happening around me and I think that's another thing that drew me to it is that I felt more in control and as people who have studied addiction or have been in a recovery program know that feeling of control is very attractive to addicts and so having a drug that made me feel that way, that, that was dangerous. Now, I didn't recognize that danger at, at the time, but it certainly played into my long-term relationship with the drug for the next 20 years that I used it. So, um, tomorrow, I'm going to continue reading his story about uh, how he used both marijuana and other drugs, um, and the reason that I want to go through this is to highlight that addiction is not something that's just isolated to um, uh, alcohol or opioids or um, stimulants, or coke, meth. It's not isolated to those things. We've also got problems with addiction with drugs like marijuana, 
Um, and uh, we've got to address that, especially as the social stigma around these drugs starts to be removed. We start to see them legalized. That is... I, I feel like makes sense. I, I don't challenge legalizing drugs like marijuana, but I do challenge the way we talk about them and the way that we recognize them because I feel like I've been through two extremes in my life. I was told they were, you know, the devil's weed. And then I got to a point where I felt like marijuana was, it's not dangerous at all. It's a plant. It can grow anywhere. It's not dangerous at all. And the truth is in between there that just like any other substance that changes your perception of the world, there is a possibility of becoming addicted to it, of your behavior changing, and of long-term consequences of using it on a habitual basis. And we need to be truthful about all of that when we're trying to educate children and each other about the drug. That's it for today. More to come tomorrow. I'll be back then.